today on Real Life. The pros and cons of psychological medication on Living Well. Pastor Glenn Walters brings the seven minute word. Taking a stand to make a difference in the local community. And still walking after a tragic injury. Today on Real Life. loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you, and the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black here with my wife, Terry, and the founder of the Cornerstone Network, Norma Bixler. Norma, we're getting ready for our anniversary. Absolutely. It's I, this week. I can't believe it's that many years. I mean, I, I don't know what happened. I'm bad. It's bad. fast. Faster and faster. That's 35 right. years on April the 15th. That's right, but our celebration is April 12th. We're having a celebration, mm -hmm. and we're going to have a special program mm -hmm. on the evening of the 12th. That's a Saturday. You don't want to miss it. Mark your calendar. It's just going to be a birthday party. Absolutely. Anniversary party. Maybe we'll have some balloons. Oh, and, <laughs> we, and we have to sing, for, uh, we have to sing uh, happy birthday and have birthday cake. So I'll have to save all my no desserts until that day. No desserts until the birthday. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to a special guest, yes. special musical guest, mm -hmm. special memories guest. It's going to be a very, very, very warm and, and friendly Gee, celebration. Yeah, I'd like to come. We got to be <laughs> Mark your calendar. Okay. <laughs> April 12th, what time's the show? Uh, it's going to be from uh, 8 till 10, I think. Oh, really? really? I think it is. I That's think it's a two hour. hour. I think it is. Don't mark your calendar that. It's, eight it's to eight nine. to nine, I'm being okay. told in my uh, off camera. That's why I don't keep the calendar. Eight, <laughs> from eight to nine. I didn't know the date, though. You've got to give me credit for the date. <laughs> Terry, the fresh start. Yes. Saturday. That's right. Is coming up. Tell, That's right. Tell, tell our family about that. Well, um, as you all remember, we started a Fresh Start Fitness Quest in January, or no, in February, mm -hmm. and we continued it in March, and then we thought, oh, what a great way it, to have um, something together, a special event. But on Saturday, April 19th, that's the day before Easter, mm -hmm. we are going to meet here at um, Cornerstone Television, and we're going to have a prayer walk. We're meeting at 10 a.m., and we are going to do a prayer walk in which we're going up and down Signal Hill. And so we're going to take care of our physical fitness and we're going to take care of our spiritual because we're going to be praying. And then um, for our soul, guess what? We're going to just get to meet new friends and, and uh, revisit with old friends and it'll be a great event. So I hope that you can come. If you would like more information, you can uh, email us at family at ctvn.org or you can give us a call and we'll give you some information. Um, just a reminder for you about what it is and um, you got to make sure you wear some good walking shoes. I was just going to say <laughs> casual. Casual <laughs> and it will be outside so you want to dress appropriately. At least it hopefully it won't be snowing. I doubt uh, if it will. Uh, no, well it snowed no, this no, weekend. No, no. You know? No, so. no, 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 no. Well, snow, only on the grass. Yeah, snow is right. over. That's right. Okay. Snow is over. I'm, okay. I'm prophesying. <laughs> snow is over. And, and if you can come, we want to invite you to come. We call this God's Mountain. They come up on God's Mountain. That's right. We're actually going to have a long walk, which is a mile, and then the not so long walk, which doesn't include this big hill, which I'll be leading that part of the walk <laughs> around hey. the building. And we'll be uh, praying too. That's another thing. Well, no, well, but and, and it's open to everyone. Let's make sure that everyone oh, knows that. I thought that. it was only the people that communicated with you. No, no anybody no. can come. We always can have a fresh start anytime. Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad we got that straight because so, I, I didn't know I didn't do the fresh start. Okay. And no. I mean, you can look at me and tell I didn't. <laughs> no, but no, I no, didn't no. think. Fresh I thought start. it was just those special oh, people. No. Thanks for thanks for bringing that up. It's for everybody who is watching. And even if you're not watching and you want to come for this special prayer walk, we'd love to have you come. Yeah. Great way to have them um, celebrate the Holy Weekend. Men, women, children. I was going to say bring your dogs, but probably not a good idea. I'm Don't not going to bring dogs. our We're dogs. We're not bringing our dogs. No. <laughs> but come and be part of the family. We'll have a good time. Prayer, walking, 
and just some fellowship time. It won't take all day. It'll just be a couple hours. Our prayer partners are standing mm -hmm. by. They're here always to take your prayer, stand with you in faith. I, want, I also want to remind you that we're coming into the Holy Week. As we approach Holy Week, two, two weeks from this coming Friday, we're going to have a special communion service on real life. Mm -hmm. So we want to invite you to join us for the communion service. Mark it down on uh, the Friday on, on Good Friday, we're going to have communion here on, on the air. And then on Thursday, the day before, on Monday, Thursday, we're going to have a Seder meal. So we'll have a Seder meal on as we go into the Holy Week, as we get ready to celebrate Easter. The scripture is the center of what we do here at Cornerstone. It always has been. This month, we are focusing on scriptures that point to God's love. Mm. This is out of Deuteronomy 7th chapter, the ninth verse. The word says, Know therefore that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God, who keeps His covenant and His loving kindness to a thousandth generation. Those who love Him and keep His commandments. Amen. He's faithful. He's our God. Mm -hmm. And he, you are His child. Remember that as you go through this day, that God is with you and He loves you and He is never, ever going to turn from you. He has surrounded you with his goodness and his loving kindness. Let's, let's start with a song. Absolutely. Lindo Cooley. Great. Oh, good. As he sings, great. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with him. Amen. All right, Lindo. You want to worship the Lord with me just for a minute and thank him for his goodness? You know God has been good to you? Come on, put your hands together a little bit. Let's sing. I thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy follows me all the days of my life. Here we go. I will bless the Lord at all times. He is good. I will bless him. Watching over me, keeping me while I 
doing a little, what do you call it? I don't know, Having but we fun. were not in a, <laughs> we weren't in, in the were thinking, no. <laughs> it's more like the bump. We were doing more like the bump, but, <laughs> but uh, blessing. Amen. We will bless the Lord at all times because For he is good. Because he is good. Hallelujah. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Well, shifting gears, for those who <laughs> suffer from things like clinical depression and other psychological illness, sometimes that pain can be uh, debilitating. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand, you know, when you're in that situation, you don't understand how good God is because mm -hmm. the circumstances swallow you Absolutely. and surround you and you don't see any hope. And there are differing views on the use of medication in these kinds of cases, especially from Christian's perspective. Our good friend, Dr. Carl Benzio, the founder and executive director of the Lighthouse Network, helps us sort all of this out in this week's Living Well. Can we, can we spend some, a few minutes and talk about medication and uh, psycho, uh, what's the correct word? Psychotropic medication. Psycho, psychotropic medication. And their, and their value and your, your, your prescription of those, what, what's, what, where do they fit in? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of, con I'm, I'm a Christian psychiatrist. Some people think that's an oxymoron, like <laughs> jumbo shrimp and military intelligence. <laughs> you know, some Christians don't go to doctors even. You know, but especially a psychiatrist, there's a lot of controversy in Christian circles. You know, uh, Proverbs talks about, uh, you know, a joyful heart is good medicine. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus talks about it's not the well that need a doctor, but uh, those that are sick. So the Bible talks about healing, talks about other things other than God doing miraculous healing. There's... Um, uh, resources that he's provided here on earth and science to help us with healing. But this area of psychiatric medications is often controversial and some places even call it psychoheresy uh, mm -hmm. in the process. Mm -hmm. So trying to figure out well, where do psychiatric medications fit in and for me I think it's real important my medical colleagues would say that psychiatric medications are the cure mm -hmm. for a lot of things but they don't cure anything. But they are important and they do help with symptoms. When you see a patient and I saw a statistic the other day, the number, the percentage of Americans that are involved with that type of medication is, it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous number. So a lot, of, a lot of people are being helped or harmed, however the perspective is, by that medication. When you, when you see somebody that comes in and you, you, you meet them and you, you diagnose them, then you're, you're good with going into the place of saying that could be a tool for healing. But you just said it's not the way that the, the problem is really eventually taken care of. Right, it's not the cure. You know, I have a, you know, a brain here, a model of a brain. Our brain is a uh, tremendous gift from God. And just like the rest of our physical body, when there's disease, we want to seek help. And there's certain medicinal things that, you know, that help that particular organ. But with the brain, it's really skills that are the long-term cure for the brain. So the Bible talks about renewing the mind mm -hmm. through good decision-making. Mm -hmm. So it's about being a good decision-maker being a godly decision maker, that's what renews the mind. But as our 
our daily life circumstances and you know, the, the poor decisions that we make throughout the course of life and just sin in the world, our mind is going to be diseased in some way and it's mm -hmm. going to present with some symptoms. And some of those symptoms, like anxiety or depression or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. poor attention span, thankfully God's given us some medications to correct some of those circuits, okay? but it's only a temporary effect. It's almost like if you look at heart disease, you know, heart disease can come from stress and uh, conflict resolution skills and poor habits of mm -hmm. eating and mm -hmm. um, sleep, exercise, those kind of things. If we intervene real early, it's just skills that we need mm -hmm. to nutrition, exercise, sleep better, manage conflict easier, have better uh, marriage skills. That's going to reduce our high blood pressure and our heart problem. A lot but, of people don't think in terms of mind disease because we put disease in categories that are more uh, the physical, you know. Correct. I've got uh, a broken hand, I've got a, a heart disease, but you just said mind disease. I don't know that I've ever heard that term, a, a mind disease. Can you give me more explanation on it? Yeah, so our brain is this great resource that God's given us, this incredible mm -hmm. gift that we're just starting to understand mm -hmm. more and more. But everything we do in life comes through our brain. Every decision that we make. Now there's spiritual aspects to it and psychological aspects, mm -hmm. but most of our disease comes from really our psychological decision-making mindset. So even something like diabetes, mm -hmm. where you know, for the adult onset diabetes, it's a uh, process of people using food to manage stress, to solve problems, to escape. Mm -hmm. And as they eat excessively, their pancreas starts to shut down. So you have this physiological mm -hmm. illness or mm -hmm. disease that happens from a psychological steps in decision-making process. So what we need to do is incorporate those spiritual truths and principles from the Word to be able to be a healthy decision-maker, and that's what actually recircuits our brain. So that, the Bible says renews our mind. So that's what, when you say renew the mind, you're, that's a physiological thing? Well, I believe the Bible talks about it in a spiritual sense, but I believe he's also talking about it in a psychological mm -hmm. and physiological mm -hmm. sense of recircuiting our brain chemistry. So just like that person that has heart disease, we'd like to get them skills first, but if they have a heart attack, it, prayer and faith isn't going to heal that heart. Right. They have damage, so we still need to give them medications. Right. Right. Now they need to practice those spiritual disciplines and those spiritual skills so they don't have the second heart attack and the third heart attack, but they might not be able to live without heart medications to, you know, to help manage those symptoms for their heart. Right. The same way with the brain. God's given us these great uh, medicines that can help our brain chemistry but they're sort of a band-aid for that circuitry. Uh -huh. It's really those skills of decision-making that we need ongoing that really renews our mind. So the disease is, is a product of decision-making or reaction to life's circumstances, mm -hmm. but the medication can be a bridge? Is that what I'm, hear, I'm hearing you yeah, say? Yeah, so the medication reduces some of those symptoms. So just like if I broke my ankle, I need pain meds mm -hmm. to reduce that pain so I can engage in physical therapy. Right. So when we have depression or anxiety or some other psychiatric mm -hmm. situations, um, that medication helps reduce those symptoms. So hopefully I'm not overwhelmed with those symptoms so I can start to apply those biblical principles, those good psychological relationship skill sets to be able to function better. Because those are really, in many cases, they're very real symptoms. They're very real issues. Anxiety, depression, fear, those are real things in the person's life. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not anticipated, they're not psychosomatic, they're, they have physiological impact. Correct, there's physiological underpinnings in their brain circuitry that isn't functioning well that they need some help with, both acutely with medications and then chronically with skills that are gonna be the overall cure for the situation. You know, I, my goal in life is to glorify God uh -huh. as much as possible, that's what we're called to do. But if depression, anxiety, those things are interfering with that process, and those medications can help me mm. reduce those symptoms so that I can yeah. glorify God more, that's my goal. Because if, if you can help somebody think clearly and get through that process of the cycle of decline mm -hmm. or spin out as they, as they might, then you give them the ability to get their spirit back engaged. Correct. And then, and then the inner healing inside of that decision making can happen. Is that what you're telling me? Exactly. So, you know, it, Medications don't make you a good decision maker, right. but it reduces some of those symptoms so that hopefully you can start to incorporate those psychological and biblical truths and principles to then become a good decision maker so you can renew the mind and glorify God 
you know, as much as possible. Now, wow. the downside is whenever we start to look at the medication as the cure, yeah. and we ignore the psychological and spiritual aspects, right. there are going to be the ongoing decision-making process. And unfortunately, some people, they feel better with the medication, right. and they start to ignore right. all the other things they've been right. taught, both psychologically and spiritually, about how they need to manage their life, manage their relationships, conflict, adversity, and so on. And so then, then the medication is extended, or increased, or combinations are tried. It's just like when a person has a heart attack, you know, they're on heart meds, but then they still continue to eat. They don't right, exercise. Right. Well, they're going to keep on second, third, fourth heart med, and they're going to die of a heart attack. So the source hasn't really been impacted. They're, the symptoms are still the same. Correct. And you're dealing with the symptoms and not the source. Exactly. And they, th you have a unique practice. This is our first time being able to be together. It's fascinating to me. We, we, could, we could talk about this probably for weeks. Well, I think Christian <laughs> psychiatry is the, is the next wave of apologetics uh -huh. and evangelism because of what God is allowing us to understand about the brain and brain chemistry and all those things that we're learning about science validate what the Bible says about this is how you oh, renew your mind or this is how you lo uh, manage life in a healthy way. Well, this segment's over, but you're, you, do you have a ministry or do you have a practice or is it a, com a combination of that? It's called the Lighthouse Network? Lighthouse Network, and you can go to the uh, ctvn.org yeah. and be able to see the link to Lighthouse Network there. Right. And we have a lot of great resources and a daily devotional that I write called Stepping Stones that people can sign up for. Thank you for coming. You come back and we'll talk some more about this. Oh, thank you, Don. God bless you. Bye-bye now. Later on Real Life, author Rob Oliver shares how he's still walking years after a paralyzing injury. Pastor Glenn Walters begins a new teaching series on the 7-Minute Word. And coming up next, taking a stand that makes a difference in the local community. That's next on Real Life. The life of a single mom can just be too much. Between having to work full time to pay the bills, then one day while cleaning up, I turned on Cornerstone. They had a phone number I could call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and someone would pray for me. These people took the time. They listened and just prayed. Cornerstone is there for me. They take the time to invest in their viewers. It's not just pictures on the screen. It's people that care. That's Cornerstone, and that's the difference. God knows your situation better than you know it. God loves you and loves the person that you're praying for. You do not have to The truth is always straightforward, no matter where you are. Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack airs Monday through Friday on this station. Jesus said the devil's a bad devil. God's a good God. If it's good, it's God. If it's bad, it's the devil. But see, there's a lot of people that don't have that philosophy. Religion has actually put forth can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on It's Supernatural! Do you ever wonder what happens behind the scenes at Cornerstone Network? You can find out with the Real Life Today newsletter. It is full of information, inspiration, and personal stories. But the best part is the program schedule. If you ever think there's nothing good on TV, you don't have the right information. Get the program guide, music, movies, ministry for believers like you and me. Call 888-665-4483 or ctvn.org. Sometimes you have to just stand up for what you believe in, even when it's out in public, right there in the street, mm -hmm. right in your local community. Our own Pastor Pete Giacalone from Rainbow Temple in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, has gotten involved in an issue that's happening not far from his church. A strip club plans on opening in McKeesport, and the community is speaking out. The purpose of all of us being here today on Saturday afternoon is to show our disgust with the idea of a, a strip club coming here to McKeesport. 
Well, I'd like to thank the Christian community for sure for all of their support, and please, please continue to pray for us in the Keys Fort. Uh, you know, the presence of God is here and palpable, and we are so thankful for any support we can receive. And, and it's been exciting since we've been talking. All the horns, yes, I, I... <laughs> it's constant. <laughs> it's been wonderful. It's, it's also my understanding that the mayor of McKeesport and city council do, does not want this uh, establishment here at all. That's correct. They're doing all that they can do legally to prevent this establishment from coming here. There are many of us that are here and we'll be here every Saturday to let the people know that we are totally against uh, a strip club opening up here in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. We also want to say thank you to Cornerstone Television for their support and we're asking for all the prayers of the Christians to unite with us that righteousness will prevail instead of darkness. Amen, amen, amen. Mm. Pastor Pete, along with Councilwoman Fawn Montgomery from McKeesport, join us in the studio to tell us about how the battle goes. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So glad that you're here. So there's a, somebody wants to start a, a strip club. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell us about it. Well, uh, Don, as, as all of you know, it's, it's strictly about money, nothing about money. And the reason why, Don, that, that uh, we're so intense against it is, I'm just going to share a quick story. I'm not going to preach. It says this, <laughs> that her house, the seductress woman, her house is the way to hell, descending to the chambers of death. And, and her ways, this seductress way, her ways cast down many wounded, and all who were slain by her were strong men. Think about that, strong. So in other words, it, it, we're attacking, the, I'm attacking this strictly on a moral issue. Now, council person, Fawn Walker, uh, <laughs> it's just a blight to our, our city. Yes. I want to personally say that I am definitely against the strip club. Um, we have a lot of demonic spirits in the Keysport already. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of sexual offenders already registered in the city. So we don't need this temptation at all in the mm -hmm. city. So I'm personally against it. The mayor, rest of my colleagues, were absolutely against this as well. Um, legally, what we're trying to do at this point is stop a couple of licenses from going through. Mm -hmm. um, okay. In addition, we're working with the owner of the property because the young man doesn't own the property. We're working with the owner of the property with some things on the lease legally. Mm -hmm. Trying to go that route with it. In addition, we're working with the local minister and with various pastors where there's prayer every Monday mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock at Bethlehem Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. um, there's every Saturday at noon, they'll be out picketing, and we're also doing phone calls and various mm -hmm. letters as well. So, also just want to ask for prayer for the community and mm -hmm. for the young man as well um, because this is all he knows. Um, and he's been doing this, you know, for the majority of his life. So we all know that God can work a miracle. Sure he can. So right. we just sure like for some people to pray for his heart because yeah. overnight God can change anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. well, so, and so you want, so you're asking for us to pray. Absolutely. And so is that, what's it take for that to go away? Like for the strip club to go away? What, mm -hmm. what will need to be done? Just the man, young man change his mind or is there already some things in process. There are already some legal things. There are okay. some legal things in process at this point. So we're trying to block him from getting a couple of licenses that he would need to even open mm -hmm. the facility, like a liquor license. Oh, okay. um, those are certain things that we're trying to block at this time. So okay. at this point, we were, that's in the courts, you know, okay. at this point. Um, we're working with the owner of the property. Um, he's trying to work out a deal for him to kind of buy out his lease at this point. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking for prayer for this young man, um, for God to really work on his heart. Um, and I really am really proud of the community and the way they really came out and really taking a stance that we don't want this in our community and we don't want it here. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of the way everyone's coming together. And I ask for prayer because I know that God can change things. That's right. Absolutely. That's exactly and I don't want right. to attack the young man. Um, I just want for God to ask to pray for his heart. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, I mm -hmm. think that's the right way to come at it because mm -hmm. he, he's, in, he's in, a, in a place that's going to take him to a, ba to a bad place Absolutely. too. Mm -hmm. And he needs to be redeemed and his life be given another start too. Yeah. Pastor, mm -hmm. what motivated you? Well, well, Don, what motivated me is uh, I've been in McKeesport for the last 10 years and I have really fallen in love with the city. And, and a councilwoman can tell you that when it comes time, anything that we can do mm -hmm. To, to bless the city, be part of the city. We have a wonderful council. Uh, we're allowed to open in prayer every council meeting. And, mm -hmm. and it echoes all the way back to the days of Mayor Brewster yes. that we are invited to open every council meeting in prayer. That means the whole local ministerium. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they, they have made a stand uh, that they want our new mayor right now. Uh, it has called on the local ministerium time and time again yes. when things hit him from, from all the murders that have taken place in McKeesport mm -hmm. to 
uh, he always calls upon the uh, the pastors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to to support him in prayer. Matter of fact, I'm part of uh, helping to stop violence there in McKeesport. Mm -hmm. and, well, good. Uh, Good. It's a demonstration of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You know, can people come out and join you in the uh, in yes, protest? Yes, please. Uh, Don, we meet every Saturday, 12 mm -hmm. to 2. In, uh, 12, just two hours, 12 to 2. And then again, as Councilwoman uh, mentioned, uh, Bethlehem Baptist Church, mm -hmm. Arlene Coleman's the pastor, every Monday, Monday uh, yes, at 7 o'clock. There's a prayer meeting. It's right there on Walnut Street. Okay. So where do you meet to do the protest, though? We, we meet right across from, it's right there. It's at Bottom Dollar. Yes. Bottom Dollar. And the Rite Aid on Walnut okay. Street. Okay. On Walnut okay. Street in McKeesport from yes. 10 no. from 12, 12 to 2. 12 to 2. Mm. Yes. So if you would like to get out and get involved this Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. On, uh, in a cause that you want to let your voice be heard. Mm -hmm. Go out and join with your family and mm -hmm. say, hey, I want to stand with you and protest this. We want to shout out for the good mm -hmm. and, and just curse the darkness. Mm -hmm. We want to do not the man. But the darkness Absolutely. that he represents. Do you want the people to bring signs? Well, the sign we have the signs. Oh, there are, there are signs? yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, Norma, it's exciting. But you know, the sad thing is, Don, Norma, and Terry. The sad thing is, um, why why don't they open this up in the communities they live in? Mm. Well, they, they don't. They they won't. This you won't see this in North Huntington. Uh, you, you, you see what I'm trying to say? Uh, let's let's go to where we can get a foothold. And we're demanding again. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're demanding. This foothold has no place in our city. Mm -hmm. I, not I, here, not now. I right? Yes, sir. I was wondering why they picked. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, because they come in to take advantage of a community. They think that they can right. get a foothold in, as Pastor says, and put a little money in and get a lot of money out. Mm -hmm. That's what their goals are. Well, guess Norma. what? I don't think it's going to happen. It's not. Do well. Amen. <laughs> what, Amen. Norma, Amen. I, when you speak, you know I listen. <laughs> when, when, when God's people stand up. Yes, sir, Don. They make a difference. Yes, they sir. make a difference. Norma, what's up next? Well, it's time for today's lesson from God's Word. We begin a new series of teachings from Pastor Glenn Walters from Judah Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Wonderful. Today's message is called, Make My Baby Jump. <laughs> and now, here's Pastor Glenn Walters with today's seven-minute word. Today, I want to talk to you about making your baby jump. I know that's kind of a weird statement that I'm making, but I, I want to show it to you in the scriptures. In Luke chapter number 1, verses 39, Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary was a young girl. Um, theologians believe that she was a teenager. And she had just stepped into her puberty to where she is now able to conceive and have children. Elizabeth is an older gen in the older generation. She is beyond her childbearing years. And so you have a young generation in Mary that is now being awakened to fertility. And then you have Elizabeth who is beyond her years of fertility that God has done a miraculous work in. And in the same time frame, both of these women are pregnant. Now, there's something that happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon Mary and conceives in her, and we know that the Christ child is on the inside of her. Elizabeth has conceived John the Baptist in her old age. She has conceived John the Baptist. And these two women who are on two different spectrums, ends of the spectrums of, of being a, the ability to be pregnant, is now coming into a room together. And Mary walks into the room and greets Elizabeth. And the first thing that happens when Mary says hello is her baby, John the Baptist, on the inside of her, leaps. Now, the first thing I want you to understand today is that pregnancy changes your priorities. It changes your priorities. Now, you, there are certain places, there are certain people, there are certain things that, you, that are dangerous to what it is that you're carrying. And the truth of the matter is, when it comes to God, we are all, the pe all of his girls. Um, he's coming back for a bride who is without spot or blemish. Um, th the Bible consistently parallels the role of Jesus and, and the church as the, uh, the role of a husband and a father. And when it comes to God, we're all his girls. I mean, paint my nails, say yes to the dress, do whatever we got to do. But when he comes, I want to be in the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
And, and, and he conceives in us purpose and destiny. He conceives in us a desire to fulfill that in which he has, he has birthed and is trying to birth and develop inside of us to do in the time that we have here on earth. I want to encourage you that there are certain places, there are certain people, and there are certain things that are dangerous, not to us as much as it is to what we are carrying. What's important for you and me today is that you understand that there are people that are in your life that when you come into contact with them, they have just as much destiny, they have just as much purpose on the inside of them as you do. They may be younger than you, they may be older than you, they, they may be at different stages of life, but you recognize when there's somebody in your life that is as pregnant with purpose as you are, and I want to be the kind of person that makes people's babies jump. I want to step inside of them and let them know that there is a God in heaven that is going to do an incredible thing in and through their life to make their babies jump. Today, I don't know where you're watching this. I don't know what it is that you're going through or what you're, what you're dealing with. But I want to speak to you today. Just like Mary said hello to Elizabeth, I'm saying hello to you. And I'm telling you that the purpose and the plan and the power of God that is on the inside of you is able able to do far more than what you think. There is no such thing as stillborn purposes to God. I want you to know today that as the longer your purpose stays inside of you, the more developed it becomes. Because God is not the kind of God who gives birth to premature purpose. He wants it to be developed full term in you. And find people in your life that will absolutely stay focused on making your baby jump, being filled with purpose, and know that that thing is resting and residing inside of you. No more, more than that today, not only do you want to find people who are making your baby jump. But you yourself, be a baby jumper. The agenda that I have today is that whatever it is that God is birthing on the inside of you, like Mary and Elizabeth's encounter, I just prophesy into your life today that destiny is sure, that your purpose is revealed, that God's plan is, is, not, is not beyond whatever your circumstances are. Today, more than anything, find people and be the kind of person that won't talk down to people trying to go up, that will try to continue to encourage you to go into what God is trying to talk you into. Our lives are filled with people who can do and, and talk and complain and be frustrated with what's going on in the world or what's going on in society. But I want to find people that when they recognize that there is a pregnant purpose on the inside of me, I want to connect with people who are just as pregnant as I am. And it may, we may not be carrying the same thing, but we know we're both carrying something. I want you to know more than anything today. Your baby, your baby is so important that there's some people you can't be around, that there's some places that you can't go, and there's some things that you can't do because it's not about protecting you as much as it is the purpose and the destiny and the plan that God has for you. Today, I know make my baby jump was a little weird and a little strange, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna end with this, this today. I've said it time and time again, that for me, a woman is never more beautiful than when she is pregnant. She is never more beautiful than when she is pregnant. She is the epitome of womanhood when she has conceived something inside of her and that thing that's in her begins to grow and develop and in due season be able to give birth to. And I want to tell you today, I don't know how long you've been carrying this purpose, but I'm here, Cornerstone Television Network is here to hopefully awaken that baby that's on the inside of you and let you know that his destiny is true, his destiny is sure, and he is able to do everything that he has set out to do and in your life. God bless you today. We pray God's favor over your life. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus Christ came to become you at the cross that you might become Him today at the Father's right hand. Hallelujah! God does not do miracles because of your obedience. God does miracles because of Jesus' obedience at the cross and you are the beneficiary. In the 
very area of your weakness, God's grace super abounds. Hello, I'm Joyce Meyer, inviting you to join me each day as we discover how to enjoy everyday life. I'm committed to helping you succeed in all areas of life and overcome problems we all face through the practical teaching of God's Word. Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life. Well, I want to help you experience His joy, love, peace, and wisdom. I'll see you very soon on Enjoying Everyday Life. Friends, I'm always so blessed when someone says our program is the fastest and most uplifting television program. I know you feel the same, Jack. And that's because good news travels fast, Rexel. And let me say this. The world is hearing nothing but doom and gloom on the news at night. But we can tell you the good news, this world will never end. Ephesians 3.21, for it's a world without end. Please make time and join us this week. Don't miss the next Jack Vanapie Prince. There is really no greater joy in my life than to see my children and grandchildren safe and happy. When I was young, the world seemed slower and safer. You could turn on the television and not be embarrassed by what might come up on the screen. Then I found Cornerstone, a television network whose mission is to uplift and inspire, that holds Christian family values at the forefront of what it does. They're here to support my family and yours 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's Cornerstone, and that's the difference. Our next guest was paralyzed at age 21 after a tragic injury. About to begin the prime of his life, he was faced with whether or not he would even have a quality of life at all. He's authored the book, Still Walking, and is here to tell us his inspirational story. Rob Oliver, welcome to Real Life. Yay! We're so glad you're here. Thank you very much. I'm glad yeah. to be here. We're so glad you're here. And could you just, just let's start off by just telling us about what happened. You were not born with an injury. You, it happened to you at age 21, right? Uh, right. Of course, at 21, I was one of those active, athletic kind of guys. I wasn't really into organized sports, but I was doing all the fun stuff that's out there. I was riding bikes, playing games, doing everything. A little bit of extreme stuff. So I was body surfing on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Mm. and. Really, the only way I can describe it is it, body surfing. You're familiar with body surfing. I it's, am. I am. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. It's surfing without a surfboard. Your body right. is the board. So right, okay. right. as I was riding the wave in towards the shore, instead of it carrying me forward, it actually pushed me down. I hit my head on the bottom mm -hmm. and I felt something pop and I heard a crunch and then everything went cold. Mm -hmm. And really, I couldn't move at that point. You couldn't move and you were in the water. Yes. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's really a scary thing. Oh, oh I, I think that would be I, terrible. I love the water, but I can't imagine being in an accident. And yes. How did you get out? So, well, really, that's one of the things. As I lay in the water, I couldn't move at all, and the water rolled me around, and it was a matter of hold my breath, hope, and pray. And I tell you, there is nothing as comforting in the whole world as knowing that you're right with God. Mm. To know that whatever this circumstance is, however it happens, if I don't make it out of here, I know where I'm going and I know that wow. I, I've got that settled. Thankfully, I was there with a number of my friends and when one of my friends saw me, my face cleared the water for a second. He saw I didn't stand up and so he came in after me. Uh, a little bit embarrassed to admit this, the bathing suit that I was wearing was one of those colorfully uh, it was a very colorful oh, bathing suit. Like the fluorescent suit. kind of back then? Yeah, it was, it was in the early 90s and it was yes, acceptable. Sure. Uh, my kids are always embarrassed when I talk about it, but it <laughs> saved my life because when my friend was it's looking horrible. for me. That's yeah, right. He was, yeah. That was what he was attracted to was the color. So he came in, pulled me out and saved my life. Wow. I say thank God for the bathing suit. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then you found out that it's, you broke your neck. Is that what happened? Correct. Mm -hmm. I broke my neck. At, uh, the C5-6 level. Oh, wow. C5, no, that doesn't mean anything to me, but that's... It's not a good thing. Right. No, it, yeah. it's in the cervical region, which means that um, I don't have any use of anything from my chest down. I've got limited use of my arms and hands, enough to be able to take care of myself somewhat. Uh, I do drive and am able to get around, work full time, all amazing. that kind of thing. Isn't that amazing? So you've got, you went through a lot of, you were in the hospital for a number of months and then you went to a rehab center and then from there. And we need to put in here about the fact you had a girlfriend during this time too. So right. um, what about that? Uh, my girlfriend at the time, 
was actually on the beach and saw me injured and really I wanted to make sure that she and I were okay. Mm -hmm. So the first three days I was on a ventilator. I couldn't talk to anybody. I, one of the things that's in the book is about how difficult it was to communicate during that time. But when I could finally talk, I said, listen, you and I need to talk and it's about us. Mm. I said, I don't know what the future holds. It looks like it holds a lot of limitations. It looks like there's going to be some significant um, obstacles to overcome in the future. But if that's, if that's overwhelming for you, I need you to be okay. And if you need to leave, I'm okay with that. Mm. And I said, I don't know what you're feeling towards me, but if you're just feeling sorry for me, if you're feeling pity towards me, that's not the foundation for a lifelong relationship. Mm. And the other thing I said is, I don't know what kind of pressure you're under from other people. And they would say, you can't leave him now in his hour of great need. And those people aren't a part of us. This is about you and it's about me. And right now, what I was telling her was, this is about you. Mm. I want you to be okay. And so whatever you need to do, if you need to, to leave, I'm okay with that. Mm. And she got real mad and with big tears in her eyes, she said, listen, what I love about you has nothing to do with whether or not you can walk. I love you mm. for who you are on the inside. Aww. And if you think you can get rid of me, that is, you've got another thing coming. Wow. Sweet. So this girlfriend then became your wife. Absolutely. When you find somebody that loves you for who you are, yeah. of course you marry them and she is mm -hmm. the most beautiful creature God ever created. With apologies to you two, you come in. <laughs> uh, but the fact is that what she taught me, that very first conversation that we had is this. Just because I have limitations and just because there are physical things that I may or may not be able mm -hmm. to do, it doesn't change the fact that it's about what's going on in here. Mm -hmm. It's about character and it's about personality. It's about heart. It's about who you are on the inside. And so even though I may have a quirky sense of humor and I've got my own little idiosyncrasies, it's really about finding someone in life who appreciates you for who you are and forming a lifelong relationship with them. Well, I just want to ask you, um, were you tempted during this shocking thing that was unpleasant that happened to you. Did you feel like having a pity party? I will tell you this, for the most part, I really appreciate what God has given to me. And uh, there are times, uh, probably once or twice a year that I crash. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is really hard. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, there are problems. And this is, you're dealing with the same thing every single day. And you know that tomorrow when you wake up, you've got the same thing going on. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, then my wife, uh, God bless her, she reminds me how wonderful it is that I have a wonderful wife and I've got wonderful kids. <laughs> but oh, you have three. I've That's got right. three of them, yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I'll have to tell you about them in a minute. But the fact is this, that it's about getting refocused mm -hmm. on what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so to take and understand that the Lord has truly blessed me and he has given, he's given me life. Mm -hmm. and with the frailty that I understand that we have in life, we've got no guarantees about it. And Absolutely. so what I've come to understand is every single day is a gift. And really that's not just limited to being wheelchair bound. Can you just, your message goes beyond that. It really it is. Mm -hmm. The fact is everybody has problems. Everybody mm -hmm. has limitations. Part of being human means that we can't do everything. That's why well, we like that's, to think we can, but we can't. We can't. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we can do everything through Christ who gives us strength. Right. But the fact is that we have the abilities that God has given us. And what happens so often is Satan would have us focus on what we can't do. Mm -hmm. And that gets us down and we become, uh, we become, for lack of a better term, paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a liar. Mm -hmm. Right. But he wants our focus to be off. Right. That's right. And That's so right. when we take and we, the abilities that God has given us, the mm -hmm. tools that God has given us, and we can use those to live our lives, to enjoy what we have, and really to bring honor and glory to Him and to His Son. That's what life's about. And we, we all work together. So sometimes it's, it's like we were talking about, sometimes maybe it's hard to ask for help, and, and uh, you know, and, but we need each other to help us out. It is. I can't, obviously I've got, with my limitations, I need help. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to have people help me do things. And it's a fine line to work between, am I stubborn and going to do this on my own? Or am I gonna have to ask for help? And then also making sure that when I'm asking for help, 
do, am I asking kindly, but am I also being appreciative of what others are doing for mm -hmm. me? Well, you know, you're such an inspiration too. And um, this book I think was awesome in that it just shares and details your journey and it, um, it, it, it motivates all of us to see that God has a plan for us and not to be paralyzed like you were saying, I know that we can um, get your book if they come, if they email what, at um, ctvn.org. Your book is available through that as well. And his um, story talks about his children. He doesn't only have three children, he has triplets, isn't it? You know, it, it's funny how different people look at things and I, I tell people I have triplets and they say, oh, God bless you. And my take on it is he has. We were having trouble having kids and yet we were blessed to have three at one time, and obviously I wouldn't trade any of them okay. for the world. No, I, you have a boy and two girls, I've right? got a boy and two girls. That's when they right. were not being born, I said to the doc, like, hey, he's outnumbered, can you at least give him seniority? And <laughs> I, the doc said, like, hey, how they come out is how they come out, but yeah, he's... Uh, he's the oldest? He's the oldest oh, by a full minute. Oh, so, that's cool. yeah. I, I wanna know, because I know people are wondering, you have a family, obviously, your wife is home, She's taking care of the kids and helps take care of you. How do you have a living? Um, I work for the Disability Rights Network of Pennsylvania, and I'm doing advocacy work to protect the rights of people with disabilities to make sure that they are receiving the services that they deserve. Wow, and, yeah. that's amazing. That's, and you also are a motivational speaker. Absolutely. So we can, you can be called and, and asked to come and speak and encourage all of us too. I would love to, that'd be um, a wonderful thing. Well, I, we appreciate you coming. Thank you so much. It was just a delight to meet you and, and, to, and to be encouraged and inspired that there is no boundaries at all, you know, regardless of what, of what life brings. Your, your quote is, I am still walking. I think that's really great. Whatever the journey is, that you're still walking. So that's great. Well, th thank you very much. It's been a real privilege to be here. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, we're going to go ahead and in a ju just a moment, we'll be praying for your needs. But first, let's see what's on tomorrow's Real Life. Tomorrow on Real Life. Consequences of bankruptcy on real money. Arlene Williams has another great recipe from the Real Life Kitchen. And Pastor Norman Lee Schaefer shares his heart for ministry at the Garden Worship Center. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Let me tell you my real life story. Dear Mr. Black, one day I was watching soap operas on TV and I started to surf the channels during a commercial. As I was clicking the remote, I heard a guy say, if anyone has a problem, feel free to call us and speak to one of our prayer partners. It was you, Don Black, on the Real Life program telling us that God would fix any problem through prayer. Well, I had a problem and I needed some help, so I did just that and called the Cornerstone Network prayer line. And Jackie, a prayer partner, asked if she could pray for me. I explained to Jackie that my sister, a widow and nearly 80 years old, had a big problem with frozen pipes in her home. She could not afford a plumber and we were concerned that her frozen pipes might break. She was worried and up all night checking the faucets. Jackie, the prayer partner, listened to me go on and on without interrupting and then she began the most beautiful prayer, specifically about this problem. I felt goosebumps on my arms and I got the chills. I knew God would answer her amazing prayer. I even said when, not if, but when my sister receives her miracle regarding the frozen water pipes, I will send Cornerstone Network the testimony about it along with the donation. Well, Jackie's faith was so evident in her amazing prayer that I knew in my heart that my sister would be granted this miracle. Now listen to this. Just five and a half hours after Jackie prayed, my sister called me and said, we got our miracle. She heard water running and thought at first that some of the frozen pipes had burst. But when she went upstairs to check, she saw water freely flowing in both the sink and the tub. We were both amazed and started praising God for answering Jackie's fervent prayers on behalf of my sister's problem. Enclosed is a small donation for your ministry. Thank you, and God bless. Sincerely, Sylvia and Patricia, my sister. That's nice. I, that's a bless. What a blessing. Sylvia and Patricia, we're so glad that God touched you 
and kept, and got that water, kept your water safe. You know, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a big mm -hmm. deal. Is, yeah. That's right. You lose That's your right. water, things get real tough. Well, uh, especially if you live by yourself, too, you yes. know, and you don't know how to take care of things like that. So that so makes this, it scary. This is a time where we get together and we pray for the people who've called in. And before we do, we have several praise reports. And Pete, will you share sure. one with us? Sure. Don, this uh, gal by the name of Pam had uh, extreme back pain, called the prayer line, and thank God, you know, Don, myself, there's been times I personally have called the prayer line when I've been in pain, mm -hmm. and I've never been disappointed. Mm -hmm. Never been disappointed. Mm -hmm. but, but she asked for the prayer line, and they prayed for her, and uh, the pain is gone. Praise mm -hmm. God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Norma, you have one. Yeah, I have one from a mother. She has a son, and he's been on drugs, and she called very often for several months. She's called, and she wanted to celebrate that he's been free from drugs for 13 days. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. That's Hallelujah. a nice miracle, and we pray that it continues. Yes. Yes. Amen, amen. Well, Kathy, she called in, too. She, she's, uh, her son, this is a, a son, he quit drinking. Hallelujah. He quit drinking last May, went th to rehab, in Florida, God worked out a miracle. Now he's finishing his degree, and uh, he's at the center. And God sent God sent him with the help of uh, Cornerstone to continue. Mm. Wow. He's 27 Amen. years old. Praise Hallelujah! Awesome. Well, we're going to continue to pray for him too, for his his uh, secure uh, deliverance from alcohol. Amen. Because mm -hmm. alcohol Amen. is 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 an addiction. But mm -hmm. God's stronger, more greater is He who's in us and He who's in the world. Mm -hmm. We have. We have several prayer requests that have been phoned in. We want to encourage you. There's still time for you to call 888-665-4483 and to uh, tell us what your prayer request mm -hmm. is. And, you know, Bob, Rob, your testimony mm -hmm. is really stirs. It stirs mm -hmm. my heart. Mm -hmm. And the word that you said to, that I took away from it, everybody has problems. Yes. Okay. Everybody has issues. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those, it's part of being human. And yet we have that confidence that we can do all things through Christ mm. who gives us strength. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's in the middle of the night sometimes when we are, when we're most vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. And it's in the middle of the night that the Spirit of God gives us that comfort and that strength. Mm -hmm. It's the beautiful thing that Paul says uh, when he asks the Lord to take away that uh, thorn in the flesh. The Lord says, my grace is sufficient mm -hmm. for you. For when you are weak, that's when I'm strong. Amen, 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 amen. Well, let's pray. Let's, okay. let's, let's, let's reach your hands towards these prayer requests and just stretch out our faith. Yes. Father God, we're, yes. we're grateful that you are faithful yes. to us. You're faithful to your people, yes. Lord. You are kind. Your loving kindness is extended to us. Lord, we receive that in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for every one of these prayer requests. Lord, you know the circumstances and the situations. You, Lord, you know where the needs are. Lord, we pray that you will provide for every one of these needs in the name of Jesus. Lord, you love them for healing. Lord, you love them for deliverance. Father, you love them for a new beginning and restoration of relationships. God, you are moving in the hearts of these people, your loved ones, in mighty ways. I pray, God, that you'll uh, allow them and uh, show them how to hear your voice clearly. And as they hear your voice, Lord Jesus, that they will never, ever be the same again. Yes. This is a day of new beginnings in these lives. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Real Life. Amen. <laughs>